Hey, I'm Sean Powers. Let's learn some Linux. Now, specifically, I'm talking about the 1.4.5 objective, which is actually just part of the 1.5 objective for the CompTIA Linux Plus certification. Now, again, whether you're trying to get certified or not, this course is designed to help you become a better system administrator. And as it turns out, this last section of 1.5 We've done almost everything. We've talked about Secure Shell. Um, I'm, I have a playlist that I'm pretty happy with. It talks about SSH in far more depth than you would ever need for Linux Plus. I'll try to put a link either in the description or maybe up there, or wherever you see a link, uh, that'll be to the SSH course. Uh, we've looked at Netcat and rsync. Uh, we looked at those uh, together in a video in this series. And so, um, most of this is already done. However, I do want to talk about curl and wget. They both do similar things, but in a slightly different way. And then I want to talk about the difference between secure copy and secure FTP. I know this is my head's covering up the end of this, but it's uh, right over here. It says secure or SFTP. Those are two very closely related protocols, but they are different and it's important to know the difference. Now, both tools are generally used to get information from the web to your local command line. They're like command line tools to get stuff. Wget or webget is specifically, as far as I know, uh, for fetching files from the web, you know, HTTP or HTTPS. Uh, you can send some stuff with like post commands with wget, uh, but it's generally a retrieval thing you can get files you can also download entire websites now curl you use it a lot of times for the same thing but curl can send stuff it can go to and from it can use multiple protocols like you can use ftp or scp using curl for the most part though you still use it on uh websites generally that's that's what i've always used it on uh just like wget the nice thing about curl is that it can dump the contents directly to standard output so let me show you what i mean so for example, with wget, if we do wget and then a URL for a file, so https home.brainofshawn.com forward slash uploads forward slash microwave.jpg, it's going to get the file that I linked to and it's going to download it using that same name. So we see here microwave.jpg. If I pull down a little browser here, we can see this is just a meme of a funny microwave that I happen to have in my uploads folder. Uh, but that is how uh, wget can work. Now you can do some things with wget, like we could do the same exact thing, uh, but dash capital O, and I could save it as um, a different name micro.jpg and it's going to download it, but then it's going to save it using that same name. So if we look over here, it's the same exact file. It's just saved as a different name. Now, the one thing you can do with wget that I don't think you can do with curl or at least not well is mirror an entire website. So if we were to do something like the dash M flag, which we're not going to go through because it gets complicated. There's also like flags for changing the links in the downloaded mirror. So if you click on a link, it actually points to a link in the mirror that you made instead of the original link online, blah, blah, blah. There's lots of flags, lots of things to do, but wget is really good at websites. That's really the thing to remember is that it's really good at web pages. And uh, what I did here is, you know, yeah, it, it just downloaded the the website or the, the file from the website, but that's what it does. It downloads stuff from the web or it can mirror an entire website. Now, curl uh, is very similar in how it works, but by default, it doesn't save a file. So let me clear the screen here. If we were to do curl, uh, let's just do a website. So HTTPS colon slash slash google.com. Uh, it's, uh, well... <laughs> A couple things here. One, it shoots the web page out to standard output. So we see this is actually the web stuff that says it's been moved. The thing about curl by default, it doesn't follow redirects. So this is a, a 301 redirect to www.google.com. So if you wanted to follow a redirect, you have to do the dash capital L flag. I'm not sure why it's capital L, but it is. Uh, so curl dash capital L HTTPS google.com. And then this is the whole uh, Google web page, like in its HTML goodness here. This is its HTML glory. If you go to Google right now, this is what the body would look like. You can see at the end here, uh, see this is the, the very end of the HTML stuff. Now, 
because it does it to standard output, that means that you can do stuff like scrape an API using curl. Uh, for example, I created, I hope it's still active, otherwise I'll feel silly. I created a website that checks for a local IP address and mine is dynamic. So I'm not too worried about exposing my, my live IP address here. Uh, it will change before long anyway, but if we do curl HTTPS, it's not actually, you know, I better do dash L. I don't, it probably is going to redirect, uh, HTTPS ip.snar.co. It should return. Sure enough, it returned an IP address and nothing else because that is what the website actually returns is it returns just the IP address. And so then you can use curl inside of a script to get your local public IP address. If you want, uh, just, you know, dump the contents into a variable or something in a bash script. And it's very, very useful. So curl is useful in that it just spews it to standard output by default, uh, but you can redirect it to a file. So if we wanted to do the microwave thing, let's, let's clear this. Uh, let's get rid of everything in here. So nothing up my sleeve. If we were to do curl dash, I believe it's lowercase O with curl, which is confusing because with W get it's capital O lowercase O with curl. Uh, the output is microwave.jpg and I want it to get it. Actually, let's just so you know, it's really doing the thing. Um, we're going to name it that dot JPEG SDF, blah, blah, blah. And where do I want it to get it from? Home.brainofshawn.com uploads microwave.jpg. And so what it did here is because it didn't spew it just to the, the screen to standard output, it actually gave us a nice little graph. Now it's a pretty small file, so it went quickly, uh, but it is like a nice little progress meter that goes and shows you what it's doing, which is just kind of nice. And then if we look, sure enough there, it, it saved that file if you want. I can prove it's still the silly microwave tipped on its side. And so that is, uh, you can do the same thing with curl that you did with wget, but again, wget will do website mirroring and then curl just has all the options. You can do other things with curl too. Like you can actually use the FTP protocol with curl. Although honestly, again, usually people just use curl to interact with websites uh, just like this in in my day-to-day -day use i generally do something like that ip example up above where i will pull information from curl and then i will pipe the output like into awk or sed or something like that to scrape a web page uh, but there's a lot of different things you can do with wget and curl they are for interacting with the web asterisk because you know curl does other stuff too now i want to talk about scp and SFTP because they both use the SSH protocol. So they both go over SSH. However, SCP is just basically like CP on the command line copy over SSH. And so you have to have a shell on the other side because you are just like copying uh, from the remote server back and forth. Now, SFTP functions very much like the traditional FTP program, but instead of using FTP protocol, it uses the SSH protocol, which means it's interactive. Now, the side effect of that is you can actually create an account on a Linux server that only has SFTP access. So you don't want somebody to have a shell where they can log in and do stuff on your system. You can just give them SFTP access, and this requires some SSH configuration, which is beyond the scope of this video. Uh, but know that it's, it's one of the cool things you can do, and then they will still have the ability to uh, upload and download files back and forth from the server. They just can't log in and get an interactive shell. Uh, but they function similarly with copying files, except like I said, SFTP can be interactive. So let's look, I'll just, we, we'll show you both and uh, you'll see what situation fits best for what you need to accomplish. So we're back here on the command line and I just have this uh, file that we downloaded. It's the microwave picture again, uh, but it's named something goofy. So what we can do is using SCP, first of all, like I said, it functions just like the copy command. And on my local server named Pookie, I have SSH keys installed, which again, check out that SSH playlist if you're not familiar with SSH keys. Uh, but basically it means that I can log in without typing in my password. So I'll show you that first, just so you understand what's going on. So if I just type SSH Pookie, the name of the server on my local network, it logs me right in without asking for my uh, login or password or without asking for my password. My login is S powers. Uh, so I'll get out of there. 
clear the screen. So now in here, I have this file. If I wanted to copy it to Pookie, I could just say SCP and then the source file, which is the SD blah, blah, blah. And then the destination, which is the remote server. Now you could put, if, if your username is the same, you can leave your username off, but I'll say S powers at Pookie. Or I could just say Pookie, because again, S powers is the username on both this local computer and Pookie. And then a colon, and then the path that I want to put it on. In my case, I want to put it on forward slash home forward slash S powers. Okay. And I want it to copy just like CP, but SCP, that SDF file across the network. So I'm gonna press enter and it will copy that file over the network, just like it would have copied if it was from one folder to another. All right. And so now if we SSH over to Pookie again, and we do LS, we're going to see that I have SDF, ASDF, JPEG over there. Okay. So it copied over and it's there. Now there is a file called rotate.mp4. Uh, so let's exit because just like I could copy a file with the source file locally and the destination remote, I can do the same thing with the source file being remote. So I could say SCP Pookie home S powers rotate. And I could actually go even further. I can use globbing just like you can with copy. So I could, well, the file was called rotate.mp4, but I'm just going to say row star. And so it will include everything that that glob matches and the destination. I want it to be this current folder. So dot for the current folder, right? That's the current folder that we're in is dot. And so that's where it's going to copy it to press enter. And it searched using that glob. So RO star and it copy, well, it's actually copying. It looks like it's kind of a large file. <laughs> um, it's copying the file over the network again, just as if it were a, um, a local folder that I was copying using the CP command. So we look and sure enough, there the rotate uh, command is. Now we can do the same thing with SFTP, but it's cool because SFTP is interactive. So uh, let me show you what I mean. Let's get rid of SDF thing here. So we have that and then I'm going to set things up, right? So I'm going to SSH back over to Pookie. And then on this side, uh, I'm going to get rid of rotate.mp4. Oh, yes. Can I get rid of it? Yeah, good. Okay. Uh, exit. Clear the screen. So now if you have this in your head, on my local machine, I have that rotated.mp4. And on the remote Pookie server, I have the SDF JPEG file. Okay. Uh, I want them both to have each. So I'm going to use SFTP to do pretty much the same thing we just did with SCP. Okay. So I'm back here on my system here. I'm just going to type SFTP Pookie. And what this is going to do is connect me with an interactive SFTP shell kind of a thing. I guess shell is not a good word because like I said, you can make it so you can't have shell access, but I'm in a session. I guess that's the more proper term. So I'm in an SFTP session on Pookie. So on the remote session, I can type LS and it's going to show me what's in that directory. And sure enough, there's that SDF file uh, that we want to get. And so how we would get that is say, get SD. And then I use tab autocomplete, which also works over SFTP. I wasn't actually sure until I tried it, <laughs> but you could do that. And then you just type get, and then the file name, and it's going to fetch it from the remote system to the local system. Now, you can type ls to see what's over there, but you can type lls, so two l's, and that will give you a local listing. So on my local file system, if I do that, we now have the SDF file and the rotate file, because again, that's on my local uh, directory. So what if we wanted to put rotate.mp4 on the remote server? Well, I'm glad you asked because the command is put. <laughs> so if we say put, rotate and you can use auto tab completion there too. And it's going to, since we're putting, it's going to complete stuff in my local directory. Uh, we say put rotate.mp4, press enter. And now it's going to upload the file from our local computer to Pookie, which we are SFTP'd into. And now if we do LS on the remote server, we have that. If we do LLS for our local server, look at that. We have the same thing on both servers. And then to get out of here, you would just type exit. And now we're back on our computer. And sure enough, we have that file. Now, of course, that was a very simplistic way of checking out S SFTP and SCP. 
Uh, but understanding the difference is important. You can use either one or both, however you want to use it. If you have an interactive like GUI uh, thing, it generally uses SFTP because it will establish a session and then you, you send stuff while you're in that session. So, you know, that's good. But generally on the command line, I use SCP far more than SFTP uh, just because I quickly want to copy a file across the network. And you can do that across the internet too. I mean, SCP uses SSH. So anywhere you can SSH, you can copy a file. And it's just a, it's just a really great way to manage things remotely. Anyway, I hope that was useful. The other things in this objective, again, I'll put links in the description so that you can see other tools, things that we've covered in this course, even, I mean, the Linux plus course, we already looked at our sync and all that stuff. So a netcat, in fact, there was even a weekend assignment where we looked at netcat. So I'll put all the links in the description. Uh, remember to learn everything, do what you love. And most importantly, be kind. Thank you to everyone who can make these videos happen, and I will see you on the next one.